100% on your test. How do you do it? How do you actually get a 100% on your tests? In this video, I'm gonna give you some things that you can do that will help drastically improve your chances at getting a good grade and possibly a 100%. Now, there's no guarantees. As a concrete example, when I was in Calculus 3, I never got a 100%, ever. And every single time the teacher would give me my test back, he would laugh and say, oh, you almost got it, ho, ho, ho. This is an older guy, you know, I would get like a 99, 98. I think 96 was like the lowest grade I got on any test in that class. But I always tried to get a 100%. And in other classes, I often achieved it, but not always. The point is, when you try to get a 100%, if you work towards that goal, if you really put in the effort and do everything that I'm going to explain in this video in order to achieve that goal, chances are you're going to get a good grade, right? You're probably going to get an A. Worst case to be maybe a C, very unlikely you'll do bad if you actually take the advice and the tips that I'm going to give you. So first of all, in, in any class you're taking, it's important to realize why you should try to get a 100%. Some people will say that grades don't matter. I'm going to disagree, right? I have been the person that with other people together on a committee makes that decision. You know, does this student get the scholarship? Does this student get the scholarship, right? I have been one of those people who makes that decision. And oftentimes people will look at a student's grades and grades oftentimes are the deciding factor. Now grades aren't everything, right? It's not the end of the world if you get a bad grade or if you fail a class, right? There's, there's always hope, there's always opportunity. You can always come back. But the point is grades do matter. Also, if you're in a class, whether it be high school or college, it doesn't matter if it's math, physics, chemistry, biology, whatever, English, this is the only time you're in that class. Hopefully, right? Hopefully. Hopefully you do well and you know things go well. So barring strange circumstances or negative things where you might not do well, it's probably the only time in your life you're gonna be in that class. 20 years from now, you won't be in your college algebra class. So make it count, right? Make it count. Try to get a perfect score. Aim for perfection, and then worst case scenario, you're gonna do pretty well. So that, that's the philosophy I feel that you should adopt if you wanna do better in any class, whether it be high school or college, right? Aim to be the best. Worst case scenario, you're probably gonna do okay because you've, you've taken all the steps to be the best. Okay. so. First things first, if you're in any class, doesn't matter what it is, math, science, you need to get the basics down, the basic things that you need to do to be successful, okay? So first of all, go to class, right? You gotta show up. This is one that I was guilty of, <laughs> not doing sometimes. A typical thing people will do is they will skip class to study for another class. So a lot of times when I would skip class, I would just like not go to school or not go to that class so I could study for another class. The problem with that is that you miss the lecture. And you might say, oh, my teacher sucks. I don't get anything anyways. So what? You go in there, you write stuff down, even if you don't understand it, it's better than nothing, right? And you're getting some knowledge from that teacher. Knowledge that the teacher was trying to convey, and usually they're trying to convey that knowledge because there's importance to it, right? The teacher only has 50 minutes or two hours or however long your class is, to try to convey the information to you that you need to learn. So a good teacher, even a not so good teacher, will try to do their job. They'll get up there in front of the class and they will try to explain the things that matter, the things that the students need to learn for the test. So go to class. Second thing you wanna do is actually do all of the homework. I've had countless students in the past who are brilliant, but they refuse to do the homework. They're like, oh, I don't wanna do the homework, it's boring. Test comes around, sometimes they'll do okay, sometimes not so okay, but usually they can do a lot better if they do the homework. So do the homework. Also, it's part of your grade. Right? So try to get a 100% on the homework, right? That, that's a given, that's a given. What I've often seen with this is, it's kind of backwards. A lot of people who aren't good at math will work extra hard 
because they know they're not good. So they know they need that homework grade. So they'll get a 100% on the homework, but they won't do so good on the test, right? And then you'll get these students who won't even do the homework and they'll do good on the test, which is backwards, right? You might say, shouldn't you do the homework to do well on the test? Yeah, but everyone has a different background. You know, a classroom is supposed to be equal. I mean, you've, got, you've got 30 students in there and you've got a teacher and it's supposed to be fair. And it is, but the thing is, people come in with different backgrounds and different sets of knowledge. So some students are gonna be way above other students. That's normal, it's part of life. So try not to fall into the trap of feeling bad because you see someone else who's doing better than you. Use, use someone else's success as a source of inspiration for your own success. That's what you should do. That's what I do. So do all of the homework, go to class, go over your notes, Again, those notes are key. Everything the teacher writes on the board, again, just to reiterate, is important. If they're a decent teacher, then they know they're not wasting your time, right? Everything that they're explaining is something you should know or something that's gonna benefit you in some way, whether it be for the test or for the future. Every word the teacher says should be, in some sense, productive or helpful to you. That is the goal of a good teacher, in my opinion. Next thing you wanna do, if you have this, is go through a review. If your teacher offers any type of review, you want to worship the review. A review is basically, because some people have asked me about this, so I'll explain it. A review is basically where the teacher goes over all the core concepts that you might need to, that you might need to know for the test. You know, here's a list of topics and things that you should know in order to prepare for the test. Make sure you go over the review. So when it comes time to study for the test, what you wanna do is you wanna go back and you want to make sure that you can do every single homework problem, every single example from your notes, and every single review problem cold without looking at your notes. So again, you wanna do everything. You wanna know everything that's taught cold. So every example, every homework problem, every, rev every review problem if you have one, without looking at your notes, okay? This will get you an A on pretty much every single test in every single class. And if it doesn't, then there's something wrong with the class probably. I mean, there probably is, right? Because teachers, you know, they're human beings. They're, they're not out to get people, right? Like, <laughs> they want their students to do well. So if you go over everything, if you can do everything, chances are you're gonna do well. The problem with this, the big problem with this strategy that I am suggesting, that I have done and tried to do, is that it takes time. It takes a ridiculous amount of effort to make sure that you can do all the homework and go over all the notes and go over all the review problems cold, right? It's, it's hard to do that. And most people don't work that hard because it just takes too much time. I always tried to work that hard, but I, I couldn't always do it. I'd be lying if I said I did. I, that was my goal though. In terms of priority though, I would say review is number one and then notes and then homework. Different teachers are different. Some teachers will, will, will take problems from the homework or similar ones and put them on the test. Some teachers will focus on in-class examples uh, and some teachers will focus on review questions. So do all three, at least make sure you can do them. You don't have to actually redo all your homework, but you wanna look at the problem and say, okay, uh, I can do this and then just skip on. If you have any doubt, if you have any doubt about whether you can solve that integral or compute that derivative or find the limit, do it. If there's any hint of doubt in your mind, you wanna sit down and, and get the pencil moving and make sure you can do all of those things cold. It is so, so important. On test day, get up early, have a good breakfast, whatever you eat. Make sure it's filling, make sure you've got some you know, protein, carbs, make sure you feel great. Don't overeat, but make sure you feel good. Make sure you sleep well. Get up early, do some homework problems. Do, do anything that you feel that you can't do, do it. Don't overdo it though. You don't wanna wake up on test day and do 100 problems. Because what that's gonna do is, by the time you get to your test, you're gonna be exhausted. Your hand is gonna hurt from doing so much mathematics. I've experienced this. I've done so much math that I've had to stop because my hands hurt. That, that's it's brutal. So what you wanna do is, you wanna look at all of your notes, look at the review, look at the no homework questions, and just make sure you can do them. Just, just look at them, look at the solutions. Okay, yeah, I understand. And if anything is hazy, write it out and do it on your own. When you get to class, continue looking at your notes. Don't talk to anybody. 
If people are nervous and they're talking and they're laughing, block out the noise. Usually on test day, everyone's jittery. They're all talking about how they're confused and they're nervous. And it's a, it's a fun time to socialize and, you know, enjoy everyone's, you know, craziness, right? But no, don't do it, right? Do not do it. You sit there with your notes and you stare at them. And when the teacher tells you to clear a desk, then you clear a desk. And then you take the test. And you just, you just keep looking at those problems. Keep looking at those solutions. Make sure you know all those techniques. Keep thinking about them. And then when you get the test, you're not burnt out. You're still fresh because you haven't overdone it. And then you get an A on that test. That's what I used to do. And I did really well. I did pretty well. I had a really high GPA. Took a bunch of math classes. Got a bunch of degrees. And it worked out for me. It takes practice to learn that. Right? It, it's a skill. Some people are not good test takers. And this is how you become a good test taker, by doing these things. So yeah, kind of a random video, but I wanted to make it because I feel like a lot of people don't know how to study. They don't know how to prepare. And the reality is, if you can do all of those things cold, all of your homework, all of the review problems, all of the notes, if you can do every single problem from those three things cold, you're probably gonna get an A. Now, things change when you go to graduate school. If you go to graduate school for math, I can only speak for math because I've only been to graduate school for math. I'm sure it's similar for other subjects. The strategy is not enough. You need to do problems from other books, oftentimes. You need to do extra problems, problems that weren't assigned as homework problems. So it takes an extra level of effort. As an undergrad, professors will look at students and you know they don't, they don't play games. They're like, this is what you're supposed to learn. Learn it, and I'm going to test you on it. As a graduate student, a lot of professors, they expect more of you. It's like, oh, you're a graduate student. Yeah, this is what you're supposed to learn, but you need to be able to figure this out, even though you've never seen it, using these skills. And it's, it's a little bit different, but I expect you to perform at a higher level. And, and that's the difference between undergrad and grad, right? It's just, a, it's, it's a whole nother level. I cannot even explain how much harder it is. But if you're an undergrad, you should be happy because this will work and it will take you very far and you can get on 100% on every test. If you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe if you want to. If not, that's okay too. The key takeaway you should take away from this video is that you wanna make sure you can do everything cold before the test and take that test day advice, right? Get up early, eat, sleep well the night before, go over everything, don't overdo it. Keep thinking about mathematics right up until the time they tell you to clear your desk. Don't talk to them, just focus on your notes. Go over the solutions because the test, it's a one day event, right? If you're taking exam two in calculus three, this is the one time in your life you're taking exam two in calculus three. Make it count. In 20 years, you will not be in the class that you're in now. By the way, before I forget, if you wanna learn mathematics, check out my courses, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, which is a reputable place to have courses, but please use, my, please use my links. I have lowered the prices to the bare minimum. So when you click those links, you'll get a low price, mathsorcerer.com. If you've been a person who has been struggling with tests, I really believe this will help you. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Until next time, don't give up and keep doing mathematics.